Okay, boys and girls, now we're going to talk about your language arts lesson for today. Um, last week with our standard chapter, scene, and stanza, that those are parts of stories, plays, and poems. Last week we focused on scenes in a play. And we learned in scene one, we introduced the characters, Chris, Robin, and Molly. And we learned that they were... Um, helping Chris with his fear of giving a speech. Then in scene two, they gave him lots of suggestions and advice and he practiced, he gave his speech, and he did win as class president. So this week we're focusing on parts of a book, chapters. And yesterday I read chapter one from the story Treasure Trunk. If you did not listen to that chapter yesterday, First, you'll want to go back and listen to that today because, again, this skill is about how one chapter or scene builds and gives us information for the next one. So to review what we learned in Chapter 1, Jeb, Ty, and Molly are discussing their class project on the study of wars and military equipment. They try to decide um, what they're going to do, and they decide on the Revolutionary War and they decide to find an actual piece of military equipment, and they come up with the idea to have Ty's big sister Gwen drive them downtown to the antique store that's owned by Mr. Nam. So here is chapter two. Again, keep chapter one in your mind. All right, kids, I don't have all day, Gwen said. Let's find your historical thing and get out of here. Ty was not quite right about his sister. She was cool, but she definitely was not happy about going with three kids on a trip to a dusty, crowded antique shop. They all walked through the narrow aisles of Mr. Nam's antique store, though junk store might be a better way to describe it, scanning the floor-to-ceiling shelves. Ow! Jeb exclaimed. My foot! He looked down and saw a huge old trunk in the middle of the aisle. Hey, guys, he shouted. Check it out. Ty, Molly, and Gwen came over and closely examined the trunk. What an awesome old trunk, Ty said. I wonder how old it is. A gruff male voice suddenly said, What do a bunch of kids like you want with an old trunk? Molly recognized the voice at once. She spun around and saw Mr. Nam staring at them. Good afternoon, Mr. Nam, Jeb said. Huh? Mr. Nam grumbled. Jeb politely asked how much the trunk cost. You children certainly cannot afford it, he snapped in his hoarse voice. We, well, I'd like to buy it then, Gwen said. I'm 18 years old, not exactly a child, and I can afford it. Mr. Nam grunted another, huh, to indicate that he wasn't pleased, but he sold the trunk to Gwen. Twenty-five dollars later, the kids had a historical artifact, maybe. It was a big risk. What if there was nothing inside that they could use? They figured the worst that could happen was they would just find some cool old stuff. And Gwen could keep the trunk. She loved decorating with vintage objects. Okay, so if we think about in chapter one, the kids decided that they wanted to find an artifact, an actual piece of military equipment. And in chapter two, they found an old trunk in the antique store. They're just not sure about the military equipment part yet. In chapter one, they asked Gwen to take them downtown. And in chapter two, if Gwen had not been there, the owner, Mr. Nam, who was kind of grouchy and apparently didn't want to deal with children, might not have let the kids buy the trunk. He might have kicked them out of their, his store. So uh, keep that in mind that things that we learned in chapter one helped us understand better the importance of events in chapter two. Lots of things would have changed if Gwen was not introduced into the story in chapter one. Okay, our writing skill is comparative and superlative. Last week we worked with adjectives. Adjectives describe nouns. 
adverbs is what we're focusing on this week, and they describe or tell more about verbs. This is really easy. Adverbs, they add to verbs. So they tell more, uh, they tell when, where, and how, to what extent a verb happens. Now, adverbs usually end with L-Y, like quickly, carefully, slowly, quietly, friendly, cautiously. So the rules comparative and superlative are the same. If comparing two verbs or actions, we would add E-R. And if comparing three or more verbs or actions, we would add E-S-T. But for those adverbs that end in L-Y, we're instead going to add more when we're doing two. You see, I still see the R-E, and we're going to add E-S-T. Well, um, I'm going to add the word most, and you see I still have the S-T. Oh, I've got to move over here and plug in, guys. I'm about to die. There we go. Um, so instead of, we might say that one person is very friendly, but then Sally is more friendly than Susie. And Jill is the friendliest person I know. So m not the most friendliest. So you will never use more and ER or most and EST. We'll either add ER to the end of the word or more in front of the word, EST to the end of the word, or most in front of the word. Again, these two, more and most, those are added when your adverb ends in LY. So write down this uh, number, 387-999-72, then click on the red link to take an comparative superlative adverbs quiz. Your spelling skill deals with high frequency words. Those are words that we frequently see like there, want, believe, people, um, friend. If you click on this link, you have a spelling rules video. Write down this number, and again, this quiz is on high-frequency spelling words. Your special today is music. If you click on this link, you'll go straight to your music course to do your music assignment for Miss Ralston. Her directions are for you to go to weekly lessons, and that's right underneath her picture. If you've gotten to this point in your day, this might be a good place for you to take a snack and a wiggle break because you're about halfway through. So I'm going to stop my video here and then I will make one for math.